Or you, you do the talking. What you know are, what you're saying. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. I have no clue what I'm saying. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, I'm recording, so. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. Morgan here for One Infinity, and we just got home from WorkbenchCon in Atlanta. This was our second year there with a the booth, so this is just kind of a fun recap of the trip. So enjoy. I love WorkbenchCon. Last year, us and the folks from CarveCo spent a few days before the event hanging out and shooting content with our friend Hamilton. We all got along like bread and butter, and now these guys feel like family. So we decided to make it a tradition. This year, we showed up to HamBenchCon on Tuesday, with twice as many people as last year. Me and Stone, obviously, our favorite beta tester Ben, Brian of Fiery Squirrel Art, the Coverco guys Leighton and Rob, with a new guy Tim that's much, much better at film than I am, and another fellow from the UK named James Dean who uses Carveco but with a different machine, and that's okay. Nobody's perfect. By the way, we captured Rob opening a mailbox for the first time in his life. Hey, hey, hey. we're yeah. gonna go open a mailbox because we've never opened a mailbox. <laughs> You people live in the jungle? Why do you live in the mailbox? <laughs> it's like watching a newborn giraffe walk for the first time. <laughs> Apparently in the UK, they don't have mailboxes. Everyone just has a little hole in their front door that literally anyone can put literally anything they want through it. Hi! Just right there in your home. That's weird. We also had our homeboy Mitz and Cody, the freaking genius behind Cadence MFG's Jenny Bits, and Kyle from Learn Your CNC. He's pretty much the master and we're just humbled to be in his presence. We were more intentional and structured about the content we were shooting because we had Tim to keep us on track. And the time we spent at Hamilton's shop was super productive. We made some videos, shared some meals, shared some laughs, and in general, just kind of built each other up. And we even got to fill out comment cards rating our stay. Five out of five. All day. Then came Thursday, setup day. Rather than shipping machines from Canada all the way down here just to ship them back in a few days time, we brought Hamilton's. So we loaded them up into my truck and headed off to Atlanta. When we got there, it was already bustling. One of the first things I saw was at the wall control booth, my friend Stephanie, who you might know as Uncommon Outpost, painstakingly collected photos of a ton of us makers, ran them through AI to create cartoon versions of us, and made Guess Who. I mean, like, the, the game Guess Who. I mean, spot on, right? AI me is gorgeous. The conference is always held at a hotel called the Waverly, which is attached to a convention center and a weird haunted mall. We got our booth set up real quick and got to socializing. I've said it in previous trip recap videos that people come to these things to connect and spend time with like-minded people. The classes and all that stuff, they're great, they're real important, but to me, the, the real appeal of WorkbenchCon is connection. We were also joined later at the show by Jay, the mad scientist behind the JTEC lasers we use on our machines. Oh, also, Stone fell in love and Dave brought his puppet. That was fun. Uh... I'm a CNC. And as a company, it's definitely important for us to have a booth there to demonstrate things, meet people, answer questions, but it's not like anybody's hearing about us for the first time. Most everyone there has seen these machines and other people's content, and the reputation is already there. So the most valuable thing we can do at events like this is to just spend time with people, and really just pour into the community we serve, and the other businesses we worked with. Last year, Rob and Leighton were there as guests, but this year, CarveCo was heavily involved. They had a booth right next to ours, and taught a class called Making It Big with CNC, and established the inaugural presentation of the Inspiration Award. And it was an impressive roster. I mean, a lot of the people that I've looked up to since I started woodworking were on that list. At the closing ceremony on Saturday, they presented the award to none other than our friend Hamilton Dilbert. and we're all super, super proud of that guy. Anyway, the expo was two days long, and it went as expected. Most everyone's in classes most of the day, but in between classes, the booth was crazy. A bunch of the people who visited us were already Onefinity users, just stopping by to say hi, and the rest were people who already had a Onefinity on their wish list and wanted to see one in person, and that made our job real easy. Then, of course, at the end of the day, when all the classes are over, it's time to party. So the Onefinity crew, and everyone that came with CarveCo, and usually a few guests would get together for dinner before all the madness in the lobby got started. And more than once we found ourselves at Wahlburger, 
And this is kind of crazy. Mark Wahlberg personally cooked and served our food to us. Thanks a million, Mark. You're the best. On Saturday, our friend Derek from Malden spent some time at our booth doing a demo for Total Boat. Derek was doing a demo showing how he makes signs with epoxy in the CNC. So to complete the process that he would normally finish on the Onefinity in his shop, he came over to our booth. And that was exciting for us, because he's like, famous. Remember that Onefinity sign we worked on at Maker Camp in October? Well, it was too cold and rainy to finish the last steps with epoxy, so they brought it to Atlanta and finished it up there. The Carveco folks met a guy who uses their software to make ice sculptures. And that's all he does, and they're super impressive. And he was nice enough to make a giant Carveco ice sculpture and bring it to the show. That's baller status right there. At the end of the day, we broke down the booth and prepared for our last night together with the community. After all the official events are done for the day, the main gathering place tends to be the bar in the hotel lobby. There we spent the rest of the night and into the wee hours of the morning catching up with one another. And when I say the wee hours in the morning, I mean like four or five. I just can't bring myself to leave when I know there are people there that I want to talk to. We only get to hang out with these people once or twice a year, so I happily settled for just a few hours of sleep a night. Totally worth it. Sunday morning was time to go home, and everyone I saw down in the lobby, including me, was visibly worn down. It was really tough. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was definitely a different ball game, but I had a blast, so thank you. <laughs> and that's how you know it was a good weekend. We said our goodbyes and hit the road, physically and mentally drained, but emotionally energized from the week. Another successful workbench con in the can. If you've never had the opportunity to spend time with the Maker community face-to-face, -face, consider going to WorkbenchCon next year. Or any of the other events where the Maker community comes together, like in real life. This was my fifth WorkbenchCon, and I've seen firsthand just how powerful events like this can be. It gives you the opportunity to make meaningful connections with other makers, meet and form partnerships with brands, and level up your business. Oh, and by the way, these t-shirts are available on our website. I'll put a link in the description for you. I look forward to seeing what next year holds for Onefinity, our users, our business partners, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.